Okay, so the starting point for our looking at uh, SharePoint tasks is a standard SharePoint 2013 team site. Now you'll notice on the left-hand side here that I have no option at the moment for tasks, so what I need to do is actually add the app into this site. I can do that from the Get Started uh, banner here, if you still have that, so there's an icon in the middle here to add an app. If you don't have that, you can always go up to the Settings, which is the cog in the top right-hand corner, and select to add an app. So that will bring me to a menu that allow me to choose which app I wish to add. So uh, up the top here I've got Tasks, so I simply select that. And in this case I will call it Tasks to keep it easy. And now create that item. So now that it's created you'll see that I have the task listed under the site contents and it also appears on the Quick Launch menu on the left hand side. So let me select Tasks to go into that area. And you'll see that Tasks involves a, a timeline up the top here. Um, and then a list of tasks underneath. So at the moment that list, list is uh, empty. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and simply click the new task. So I'm going to create my first task and I'm going to give it a start date of today and I'll give it an end date of tomorrow. Now I can assign that to somebody and I can select more options uh, down the bottom here. Okay, so I'll say that the task is actually in progress. So I'll save this, and you'll now see that the task has been created in our list, but you'll notice that it has not appeared on the timeline as yet. So what I can do now is if I select the ellipse, which is the little option here to the right of the task, and click on that, you'll see now I get information about that task. So I've got when it's due, um, its actual direct URL, and I have the option to open it, which I can select to edit it again. I can add it to the timeline, uh, create a subtask, and there is another menu available down here if I want to delete the item, for example. But in this case, I'm going to select the option to create a subtask. So I'm going to create a task two, and I'm going to start. I'm going to say that that is due uh, on Thursday, and then simply tab and tab across. Now once I finish tabbing and the entry is saved automatically for me, you'll see that what SharePoint does by default is add this very first task to our timeline. So you'll see now that task 2 is on the timeline um, and it'll only do this for the very first one. So we've got um, task 2 now on the timeline. So what I can do now is simply go into the next cell and type in uh, my next task. So I'm going to call this task 3 and let's say that that's due uh, on the Friday and just tab in there again and you'll notice I can keep going through this list and put in task 4 and let's make that due on um, the Saturday. Okay so now that I've finished uh, working and adding my tasks I need to go up to this link here to stop editing the list and you'll see now um, that it has stopped doing that and I've got one task, but you'll notice here that all the tasks from task 2 have been created as subtasks. Now that's not exactly what I want. I'm happy for task 2 to be a subtask, but 3 and 4 I want to be at the same level as task 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select task 3. I'm going to go up to the tasks um, tab in the top left hand corner and that reveals the ribbon menu. One of the options in the ribbon menu is to outdent, so I'm going to select that and you'll now see task 3 moves one place to the left and now puts it at the same level as task 1. So if I now go to task 4 and repeat that task, you'll see that that now outdents it as well. So if I stop editing the list again, we should see that task 1 um, has got task 2 as a subtask, but task 3 and task 4 are now at the same level as task 1, which is exactly what we want to do. Now at the moment we notice that task 2 is the only one on our timeline here. So I actually want to get all of these items onto the timeline quickly and easily. So what I can do is select this, the top of the very first column. This highlights all my tasks. And then you'll notice that there is a button here also on the ribbon menu under tasks called add to timeline. So if I select that, you'll now see that all my tasks have been added to the timeline. So here's task 1, task 2, task 3 and task 4. Now you'll notice that when we created task 2, 3 and 4 that we only put in the start date. So we haven't actually got a uh, completion date here. So again if we select on this and we can now open it, what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to give task, uh, we're going to edit the task. So again you'll see that it has a due date 
but it currently doesn't have a starting date. So what I'll do is let's go in here and give it a starting date of the previous day. Save that and you'll now see that on the timeline it should appear as a block. So yes, we have it as a block. So let's go into task 3, um, also open that and let's give it a, a starting date. So we will edit the item uh, once again. and go in here and give it a starting date of uh, the day before. So start there, and save that, and finally go into task 4 and repeat the process. So now we have, um, we now we have uh, four tasks that basically uh, start at a certain day and finish on a certain day. So they're obviously mentioned here um, as a block, it makes it easier to follow exactly what's going on. So put this in as the last entry here so we've now got our four tasks. Now when you look at the timeline what you'll notice here obviously is you've got task 1, 2, 3 and 4 now they're all pretty closely stacked together and it might be a bit hard to work out what's going on here so what I can actually do is if I select task 1 you'll notice that the ribbon menu opens up and I have an additional tab here called timeline. Now What I can do is I can actually go into this task here and I can actually change the fill style and I can also change the text so let's make that red and we'll also make that bold so if we go into task 2 what we can do now is we can maybe fill that uh, with orange and we can change the text again to white and bold it but this time under uh, italics it, select the third one uh, we can go in here and change that to let's make that green and select the text and make it white. Uh, again, if we want, we can actually up the font. We can make the font maybe 11, so a little bit bigger. And again, task 4, select task 4, and we can go in here and give this uh, the final colouring and change the font colour. Sorry, change the uh, background colour to blue and change the font colour to white and make it bold. So now you can see that these tasks are much easier to read and view because we've been able to customize each one. But what you may not appreciate is is that this timeline up the top is actually quite dynamic in a browser. So what I can actually do now is I can actually take this task and if you drag and drop it I can now drag it down on its own little line. I can take task 3 and drag it down on its own line and I can take task 4 and drag it down on its own line as well. So now I can, and again you'll see when I do this, that the task list down the bottom automatically resizes and moves down the page for me. So quite easy to work with. Now you'll see what we can also do is if we select for example task 2, at the moment it's currently displayed as a bar, but if we select it as a callout, so we've changed that from a bar to a callout via the ribbon menu, you'll notice that it moves from its location up to um, basically a callout here. So now I can again select this, I can go into uh, the colouring, I can choose uh, this and again the uh, colouring of the font if I want. Um, and you'll see in this case what it's done is it hasn't coloured the box but what it's colouring basically is this callout option here. Now what I can also do with this callout is for example I can actually drag and drop this. So if I go to this callout and maybe if I drag it um, down here you'll see that the callout moves from the top to the bottom. So Let's drag it over here and you'll see that it automatically resizes and again moves the list down. So again if I select task 4 and I display it as a callout, you'll see it appears at the top but if I drag it down to the bottom and maybe put it over here um, you'll see that it automatically resizes for me. So again uh, with that selected I can now for example uh, increase the font, uh, change the text to something darker uh, and again makes it nice and easy to work with in uh, the SharePoint uh, tasks. So again you'll find that once I select the task the ribbon menu gives me a number of options so again I can put in uh, the time scale, I can check that and uncheck that, um, I can remove or display the today line so again here's the, the today marker so again all of this sort of stuff is now available in SharePoint tasks. Thank you very much for watching this introduction to SharePoint tasks.